So today, let's discover a bit more about how you can read credit card information using an NFC reader. And maybe you're not aware of the fact that an Android phone with the Samsung Pay or Samsung Wallet can actually read a credit card in the same way as the Flipper Zero can do. But that is also where the similarities stops. And as I have showed earlier, even if you are reading the credit card information with the Flipper Zero and store the information, you cannot use the Flipper to emulate a contactless payment. But you can do that when using uh, a Samsung Wallet or Google Wallet, Google Pay or Apple Pay, of course. So that is because these wallets are using something called tokenization, which the Flipper Zero simply cannot do. So first, let's see, as I have showed earlier, how the Flipper Zero can read a credit card. Yeah, that was the video that was banned by YouTube, but I guess they are not aware of the fact that this is not a guide for becoming a hacker. Um, this is just an explanation of how the different systems work when it comes to read and store credit card information, such as the uh, Samsung Wallet. So let's go into the NFC menu of the Flipper and we can select read. Let's try to use this card first. Just wanted to show that it is uh, in some occasions not possible to read the information. I'm not quite sure why. I'll uh, test the same using this card on the Samsung Wallet also, but let's use this card because this uh, current card I know I can read. So let's try again. This is my credit card information in clear text. Of course, I have masked it here, but I can now go into more and I can save I can give it a name. So here I have stored it, but it's not possible to use this in a contactless payment setting. So let's try do this to do the same with the, my Samsung wallet. Here I have already a card that is stored, but I can select the plus sign, which is for adding a card. Uh, and this is to add a payment card. And now this is quite interesting because here it says you can either read the card with a camera, such as this. That means that the information needs to be at the front of the card. And luckily, uh, more and more cards are now coming with uh, only the information on the back side because that is kind of more concealed or hidden. So you have two other options as well. You can read it um, or, or add it manually by adding the information at the bottom here. But you can also, in the Samsung wallet, use NFC to read the card. Let's try to do the same thing with the first card that it, this was not read by the flipper. I'll test it here. And it says it simply cannot add the card using NFC for this card. So, okay, let's try the other card. I'll use NFC as well. And let's try this card. And here we go. Here I have to enter the CVC or CVV code. I'll of course um, not expose that here. This is the expiry date. So this is a, 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 an inactive card that has also expired just for testing purposes. If I scroll up, this is my name, which is masked of course. And here is also my credit card information number that is also masked. But that means that, yeah, this is the same information that is read by the, the Samsung wallet uh, that I could read using my Flipper Zero. So you might think now that, okay, you have read the credit card information and the Samsung wallet has stored it. So therefore I can now use it in a payment terminal for contactless payment. Well, that is how it appears for the general public, but that is not how these wallets work. Let's have a look behind the scenes and I'll try to explain how tokenization works. First of all, let's have a look at the roles and the actors being involved in this process. We have my mobile wallet, which was Samsung Pay in this case. We have the wallet provider, that is the back-end system, basically the servers of Samsung Pay. We have the payment schemes, that would be like Visa and MasterCard. And finally, we have the card issuer, which is my issuing bank. So if I would like to add my card details into my wallet, why can't I just store it directly on my phone? Well, your credit card with your chip, that is a secure environment. Your phone is not that secure. So it is considered by the card industry that your phone is not secure enough. So that's why we want to store another value that is a random number instead of your uh, credit card. And that random number, that is your token. So 
The process is that you have to enter the information using your manual input or your camera or as I just did in Samsung Pay using NFC. So all the details, including the card number, which is called the primary account number, are sent back to the backend, the wallet provider. They will ask the scheme to please tokenize, tokenize this. So it's they are sending a token request to the payment scheme with my card details. That is being sent from the scheme and the TSP, which is a token service provider, to my issuing bank to verify me as a cardholder, maybe using 3D Secure for that, and also checking all kind of kind of permissions. Uh, this uh, is this wallet allowed for tokenizing my card and so on. So when this is confirmed to be okay, it is being sent back to the scheme and the TSP. That's okay, and then. They will issue a token, a so-called TPAN, and a set of use keys, which is sent back to my wallet provider. And that is being stored in my wallet. That is my TPAN. That is not my credit card number in detail. It is uh, some use keys for encryption and also some card graphics from my card issuer. So that's why it appears that my card has now been, is being now stored in my wallet. Um, but it's actually not, it's just a image saying that this is your card and it's a token that represents that card. So if anyone should get their hands of that token, it's not that dangerous because that is not my card number. The only place that token could be exchanged back to my card number, that's inside the token vault of the TSP and the payment scheme. Then we can have a look at what's going on when you're using your phone and tapping that phone onto a payment terminal. Then we have to look at the merchant with a payment terminal as well as a role. And the merchant also have their bank involved in this, and that is called the acquire. So if you're tapping your phone to a payment terminal of a merchant, it's being sent over a cryptogram. That's a crypt encrypted message uh, that is being the token and that's encrypted with a couple of uh, other data as well such as the device id and lots of other details using the keys that you just got for from your scheme and your token service provider so the payment terminal that will not look at this as anything else than just a, a card number as tapping your card so that's being sent over back to the acquirer the query is doing the same thing sending this to the payment schemes but the payment schemes, they will identify this that, ah, this is actually not a card number, this is a token, so they will have to detokenize this in their token service provider. They will then authorize the uh, amount that should be charged uh, by checking by the issuing bank if this is okay. If this is confirmed, it will send the okay back to the scheme and the TSP, again, sending back to the acquirer which is saying, sending an OK signal back to the payment terminal and back to your mobile wallet as well. So tokens are considered to be more secure for use compared to a credit card number because you can set up different rules of use saying that uh, these kind of tokens can just be used for these kind of contexts. They can have different uh, expiration dates and so on and you can maybe use the tokens just a limited number of times and so on and you can use single use keys or tokens for uh, having kind of a new signal sent over for each time. So that's why tokenizations are great for mobile payments. And as again, as we have seen, something completely else than just storing this on a device such as a flipper. So that's why it's a huge difference in storing card information read by a flipper compared to storing this using a payment system such as the Samsung Pay or other wallets. Mm -hmm.